Welcome to the weekend camp orientation for leaders and adults. Thank you for choosing to come up to Camp Sherman. The staff and I are very excited for you to arrive. We have a weekend of fun for you and your troop to be a part of. This online orientation is for leaders and any other adults that will be coming up with a troop or their daughter for the weekend. I'm sure you're asking yourself, why do I need to watch this? It's just a weekend at camp. The purpose of this online orientation is to provide leaders and adults with information so that they are prepared before they arrive at camp. Our goal is for you as the responsible adult to be able to arrive at camp and not feel completely rushed and out of sorts after sitting in traffic. This will also contain pictures to use as landmarks on your way up to Camp Sherman, especially if you're driving up after dark. By viewing this orientation prior to your camp visit, you and your troop will be able to participate in Friday evening program once you've moved in and gotten situated. The camp staff will be, be available on Friday to answer any additional questions that you may have upon your arrival. This online orientation should take about 20 minutes. So lace up your shoes, grab your water bottle, put your feet up, and let's get you orientated. Camp is owned and operated by the Girl Scouts of Orange County. And before it was a camp, it used to be a cattle ranch. And our neighbors still run cattle in the area. And occasionally in the off season, the cattle come onto prop camp property to graze. Camp is 700 acres, so you definitely want to pack your comfy and sturdy walking shoes. Please leave your fashion shoes at home. They will get dirty. Camp is located in the San Jacinto Mountains, just above Palm Springs, and about 20 minutes east of Idlewild. Many of our Camp Sherman staff were campers, and they continue to work at camp during the summer and weekends. They have a vast amount of camp knowledge and are more than willing to share. All of our camp staff are 18 and older and have participated in extensive training throughout the year, and all of our staff are background screened. The camp staff are here to facilitate program areas which can include canoeing, archery, and the low ropes course. They're also here to assist with meal service. They are here to make sure that you are safe and having a good time. Should you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to ask any staff member. If they're unable to answer your question, they will call the weekend director who will be able to provide you with the answers and further assistance. All of our camp staff will have handheld walkie-talkies to ensure continuous camp communication. The supervision of campers is the key to safety at camp. Leaders and adults must always be with their girls no matter what the age or Girl Scout level of the campers. This includes but is not limited to during program areas as well as troop time after programming. Camp participants, even adults, should always use the buddy system. Safety first. This means you should never lose just one person. You should lose two because two is much easier to find than just one. Buddy system is key. Please don't send the girls back to the cabin if they have forgotten an item. An adult needs to go back with them even if it's an older girl. Again, buddy system. The use of alcohol at camp is strictly prohibited. If you've brought any alcohol or you're thinking about it, please don't do it. Smoking is only allowed at a designated table in the 101 parking lot. Please check with the weekend director if you are a smoker so that she can direct you to the proper area. Smoking includes but is not limited to e-cigarettes and any vapes. And remember, the use and consumption of alcohol at Camp Sherman is strictly prohibited. The weather at camp can be unpredictable. It can be cloudy and cold in Orange County, but sunny and pleasant at camp, or vice versa. Please pack accordingly, and we suggest layers. In your confirmation packet, there will be a suggested packing list for the seasons. Again, packing is a personal thing, so there's no such thing as overpacking if you think you're going to get cold or hot. A week before your camp, please check any, any weather site for the general area of Mountain Center, California, for an updated forecast for the camp. We will still offer all of the programming and will adjust accordingly based on the weather. Wildlife. Camp Sherman is located in the San Jacinto Mountains and there is a high likelihood of seeing lots of wildlife. We have deer and squirrels, chipmunks, blue jays, ravens, just to name a few. Deer sightings are very common before breakfast and dinner times. While we do not have any bears in our mountains, we are in nature and precautions should always be taken. It's important for you as the adult to have a general awareness of your surroundings and where your girls are at all times. We do have snakes, especially during the warmer months. If you see a snake, please don't panic. The girls will look to you on how to react. Remain calm and walk quickly and quietly away and contact a staff member if they are not directly with you already. Remember the two cues, quietly and quickly. 
In case of an actual emergency, the camp staff will provide you with detailed instructions. Should 911 need to be called, we have a fire department at the bottom of the hill and they are very familiar with camp and the property layout. All of the camp staff will have handheld radios to allow for continuous communication all weekend long. The weekend director and the first aider will keep their radios with them 24 hours a day. Remember that we are here to help. For first aid at camp, the troop leader and or adult are the first responders and you need to remember to bring up a fully stocked first aid kit. Troops and troop leaders and adults are responsible for properly storing and dispensing any medication that is needed for their campers. There will be a level two first aider, EMT, or registered nurse on property for the duration of the weekend camp. Should something occur that is beyond the scope or comfort level of the troop first aider, please don't hesitate to contact any camp staff member who will then call the camp first aider or the weekend director for more assistance. All of the camp staff, again, will have a handheld radio and they can contact the first aider or the weekend director at any time during the day. In case of an actual emergency, remember that the camp staff will provide you with the detailed instructions that you need to maintain proper safety. Should you need assistance in the middle of the night because a girl is sick or she had an accident, the weekend staff will be located in the C cabin, which is just across from Massey Dining Hall. Please do not hesitate to enter the cabin and wake them up for assistance no matter what time or what the issue is. It is their job and they will be more than happy to get up and assist you no matter what the issue is. Remember, we are here to help. Camp Sherman is located at an elevation of just over 5,000 feet. Not drinking enough water, even when it's not hot out, can lead to dehydration. Everyone needs to drink lots of water, including the adults. Remember, the girls will be following your lead. Some of the early symptoms of dehydration are headache, stomach ache. You are able to refill your water bottle up anywhere that water comes out, whether that's a sink, a drinking fountain, a hose, anywhere. It is all well water, really cold, and really good. There will be igloos of water all over camp at the various program areas where you can refill your water bottles. Remember that dressing in layers is the way to go. We suggest that each participant, including the girls, bring their own backpack to hold those additional layers. You as the adult don't want to get stuck holding 10 little girls jackets. For your safety, we ask that you follow the directions of the staff and help the camp staff by help enforcing those directions with your troop, both for the adults and the girls. Remember, we're here to help. Camp food is something that everybody wants to know more about. So on Friday, the troops are on their own for dinner. You can stop and eat in Temecula. You can opt to take it to go and eat it at camp as well. We will have tables set up for your convenience. Should anyone in your troop have a special dietary need, this would include food allergies and vegetarians, please email E. Johnson at girlscoutsoc.org so that we can let the kitchen know and plan accordingly. We are able to accommodate most dietary concerns with, ad with advanced notification. We may ask for some items to be brought up if we don't carry that particular dietary food product. It is really important that you let us know ahead of time so that we can plan. There's really nothing worse than finding out we had a special dietary need that we could have accommodated but no one told us ahead of time. Please know that while we are not a peanut free camp, we are peanut aware and take measures to ensure the safety of each participant. All of our meals will be served buffet style. Every item is served separately to accommodate those that may not want sauce on pasta or just pasta and meatballs. There's a wide variety of food options that will appeal to all eaters. We believe that the food should be good and easily identifiable for the campers. Meal times are as follows. Breakfast from 7.30 to 8.30. This will give the troops time to get up and come anytime between that block time. After 8.30, hot food will no longer be served, but there will be fruit and cereal available for those that want a lighter breakfast. Lunch will be approximately from 12.30 to 1.30. Dinner, 5.30 to 6.30. Snacks will be provided in the morning and afternoon on Saturday. We will have uh, allergen-friendly snacks as needed. Breakfast will be the last meal served on Sunday from 7.30 to 8.30. If you are troop tent or cabin camping for the weekend, you will be responsible for your own food preparation. For those of you that are cabin camping, there will be refrigerators available for you to share with the other troops during your weekend. 
For those of you that are tent camping, you will need to bring coolers to hold your food for the weekend. The camp staff will be doing ice runs throughout the weekend to help keep your food cold. Our intention for sleeping areas is always to sleep the troop together under the same roof. If the troop number exceeds the bed space in one cabin, we will split the troop and place them in cabins that are right close that are close by to each other. Each trooper is responsible for any specific sleeping arrangements. We won't tell you that the leaders have to sleep here and the girls sleep there. That is your responsibility as the adult to assign out how everyone is going to sleep. We will provide you with the beds and you determine who sleeps in what bed and what cabin. If troops are sharing sleeping areas, they will be with troops of the same level. So we won't put cadets with daisies. We will put daisies with daisies or daisies with brownies and juniors with juniors, for example. Ranch house cabins are more dormitory style cabins. They have heat and electricity and the restrooms are located inside the cabin. The restrooms have flushing toilets and showers. The bunk beds sleep 12 to 24 in each of those cabins. The lower camp cabins are fully enclosed cabins with four walls and a roof. These cabins do not have heat or electricity. They have bunk beds that sleep 6 to 12. The restroom is a short walk away with heat and electricity, flushing toilets, and showers. If you are troop tent camping, your troop is responsible for bringing all of your own gear and that includes your own tent. There are restrooms near each camp area with flushing toilets. If you're troop tent camping and need to shower, please talk with the weekend director for arrangements. Before you come to camp, there's a few things you can do to get ready. You can attend a camp information night. They're held monthly at the Girl Scouts headquarters in Irvine, Anaheim Program Center, and the Yorba Linda Program Center. Dates for the camp information night are on the Girl Scouts Orange County calendar. This is a great opportunity for leaders, adults, and girls to see pictures of camp, meet some of the camps, camp staff, and get any of your questions that you may have answered. A confirmation packet of information will be emailed to you approximately four weeks prior to your scheduled weekend camp. In this packet, you'll have general camp information, driving directions, as well as a suggested packing list. If you're coming up as a troop, please remember to have all of the proper paperwork filled out for the girls. This includes permission slips and health history forms. The adults need health history forms too. Please be sure to bring these forms with you and keep them with you at all times. Don't forget your first aid kit. If you find that you're missing the confirmation packet or any other information, please send an email to ejohnson at girlscoutsoc.org. Cell phones. Everybody wants to know about cell phones. You're in the mountains. Cell phones have unreliable service and reception at camp. So plan to disconnect for the weekend. Take advantage of this uninterrupted time with your troop and your daughter and be in the moment. Use your phone as your alarm clock and your camera. There will be landlines for emergency uses only. So what should you pack for a weekend at camp? You want to pack your stuff in a duffel bag, a rolling suitcase, whatever's going to get all of your gear in your car and up to camp. We've attached a do and don't bring to list for camp. This list includes a backpack. Remember to bring a backpack. Use the suggested packing list as a guide. Packing is personal and everyone has different preferences. Be sure to pack comfortable and sturdy shoes. This is not the weekend to bring up your favorite pair of fancy Ugg boots. They will get dirty and you will be sad. All weekend participants, including the adults in attendance, must wear closed toe and heel shoes for the entire weekend. This includes at dinner time, flag, breakfast, all weekend long. We are a sandal free zone unless you are swimming or showering. Each person will pack slightly different based on their personal needs. Some will opt to bring a fitted sheet for their bunk bed while others are fine with just their sleeping bag on the mattress. If there's a theme for your weekend, feel free to bring dress-up clothes, props, or an instrument if it's musically inclined. The drive up to camp. It can take a long time. Driving directions are included in the confirmation packet that will be emailed out to you. Our suggestion is that you follow those directions as this is the route that our buses will follow during the summer. It's less windy and it's friendlier to those that lean towards motion sickness. If you opt to put the camp address in your GPS, it will most likely take you up through the Hemet Way, which is slightly faster, but with about 12 miles of hairpin turns. Think of the drive going up to Big Bear. 
There is a fire station when you turn onto Morris Ranch Road. Follow the directions listed on the paper to get to Massey Hall. Please, please plan for traffic on your drive up on Friday. The 91 and 15 freeways are unpredictable. Pack your patience. Work with the girls and create a traffic game. Make a driving playlist so that everyone can sing along while you experience the corona crawl on the 91. Remember, there's a lot of things that we can positively impact at camp. Traffic isn't one of them. Please be safe and be patient. The roads off the freeway up to camp are not lined with streetlights as, as they are in the city. The drive up will be dark, so take your time. Don't forget that you're on your own for dinner on Friday. And if you find that you're running late, please call camp and let us know. The number is listed in your confirmation packet. If no one answers, leave a message with the time, your troop number, and where you think you are so that we can guesstimate your arrival. So when should you arrive for your camp weekend? We ask that you do not arrive to Camp Sherman before 5 p.m. The camp staff need to get there and from various parts of Orange County from school and their other jobs so that they can be set up and ready for your arrival. So you can arrive at 5.01 or later before 8 p.m. It's a great ideal window. When you check in, all weekend camps will check in at Massey Hall. Please park your vehicle and come into the building. The staff will be there to handle any paperwork and provide you with directions to your sleeping area. There will be camp staff in each sleeping area to help guide you to your cabin or your tent setup. Cabins will be labeled with troop numbers or by last name. If you are tent camping, a staff will be in the meadow to help guide you to the various areas that are open for your troop. Please be mindful while driving in camp, the speed limit is 10 miles per hour. Also, we ask you that you be mindful of the roadways and aware of other vehicles that will be in the area. After checking in with the weekend director, you will then be able to unload your gear at your sleeping area. Once you've unloaded your gear from your vehicle, we ask that you move your vehicle to the 101 parking lot. Please back your vehicle in. This is mandated and is for your safety. In case of an emergency, all vehicles need to be able to exit quickly and safely. Your vehicle must remain parked until the weekend director clears everyone to drive back to their sleeping areas on Sunday to begin the packing process. Please keep your vehicle keys and your ID or wallet in your backpack for the duration of the weekend. For a Friday evening program, once you've moved in, you've parked your vehicle in the parking lot, you've eaten dinner, you're more than welcome to join the camp staff in Massey Hall or any other designated area for optional evening program. That can include a night hike, stargazing, dance party, lanyards, singing songs, or playing games. If half of your group wants to attend and the other half of your group wants to go back to bed or stay in the cabin, that's fine, as long as the troop maintains proper girl and adult ratios, you can split up. If you've arrived late and your troop is tired, you're not obligated to participate in any of the evening activities. You're more than welcome to go back to your cabin and go to bed so that you're ready to go the next day. All evening program will conclude about 9.30 on Friday. There's a lot to do during the weekend and we encourage full participation, not just from the girls, but from the leaders and adults as well. There's an ample amount of equipment for the adults to have their own experience at archery and canoeing, for example. There's no need for you to have to sit back and watch. Get up, have fun, be engaged. As you can see, we have a jam-packed schedule, so lace up your shoes and get ready to have fun. There's an ample amount of activity options available for every level and every ability. Come to camp ready to participate and ready to play and to try new things. On Sunday, you'll start the day with breakfast. We'll do some program rotations, and then we'll, we'll close out the weekend with Scout Zone, which is a traditional Girl Scout ceremony used to close out an event. This is a great opportunity for troops to lead this activity with the assistance of camp staff. After Scout Zone, you'll be able to go back to your sleeping area where you'll pack and clean. Remember, cleaning is a girl job, and all Girl Scouts need to leave their area cleaner than they found it.
Camp staff will come by each of the areas to check out and do an exchange of the troop evaluation. This is included in the packet that you received and each participant will get a Camp Sherman participation patch. This will be the time of the weekend where you'll be able to go to the parking lot and retrieve your vehicles. Please make sure that you do not move your vehicle before this time. Please be aware that there are other drivers and children throughout camp. Please make sure that you stay on the road and adhere to the speed limit in camp of 10 miles per hour. Once you've been checked out by the camp staff, all troops will be able to depart camp. We recognize that this was a lot of information and you may still have additional questions. If you do, please feel free to email me, Erin Johnson, at ejohnson at girlscoutsoc.org. We look forward to having you at camp and we can't wait to see you.